Glenelg gone to Adelaide Oval for South Australia's National Football League's Grand Final. It's 35 years since the Tigers won their first and only Premiership and only the third occasion they've contested the big one. Bob Shearman captains Glenelg's opponent, Sturt. They're aiming at their fourth successive players before the season began, finished second on the points table to Glenelg, whom they defeated by 38 points in the second semi-final. Officiating in his first grand final, umpire Bob Hall. Wilde wins the hit out and Sturt are quick to seize the initiative. But on the halfback flank, Smith uses his pace intelligently to outmaneuver double blues and turn the attack. Sturt prevent Marker continuing the drive as Chessel gathers, but the tenacious Marker cleverly regains possession to send the Tigers goalwards. Jarrett spoils Fred Phyllis's attempt to mark but going in after the ball, Voigt's kick is strongly marked by Hamilton. Patterson grabs the ball off a pack as Hart backs up. Beating Brooks and Nelson, Hart handballs perfectly to Marker, who breaks away to kick to the goal square. Anticipating keenly, Fred Phillips pivots clear to snap a great full pointer as he goes in quest of a goal-kicking record. The game is being played at a fast pace, but handling the ball better, Sturt is always dangerous, and Noonan left puts a goal on the turn as Sturt begin building a handy lead. The double blues, ruck strength is strongly challenged, but the Tigers are unable to take advantage of opportunities as the more experienced Sturt takes play away from them. Sturt's pace, long kicking and teamwork confused Glenelg. Rigney dashes into the open spaces to finish off a polished movement. Sturt's third goal in five minutes. Marking strongly under pressure, Adcock beats Marker, depriving Glenelg of a vital chance. Sturt are looking the better overall combination and are more composed under the tension of the big occasion. From long range, Sturt are right on target for their fourth goal. <laughs> Through Chessel, Sturt again turns back a Tiger counter thrust. Shearman loses the ball, but Hicks covers the blemish. Shock's accurate pass is marked by Ottens in front of the goal square, giving the double blues a simple chance to add to their score. Sturt's fifth goal, and they threaten to take control, even at this early stage. Winning in the air, Sturt often play on in the face of Glenelg's disjointed defence. But with a well-judged mark, Hunt beats the taller Greenslade. However, Sturt immediately recapture the initiative when Ottens wins the mark. Ottens is within goal-kicking range, but his long shot is offline for a behind. Sturt increased their lead to 25 points, 32 to 7. Hart is doing his utmost to help Glenelg lift their tempo, but Sturt continue outplaying the Tigers, who just can't get into the game. They tend to become frustrated, but manage to keep tempers under control. Short kicks for Ottens. But Kernahan and Colby spoil Ottens' attempt to mark, giving Rosewarn a chance to spark off a thrust. The Tigers redeem their errors and score their second goal. They still trail by 19 points, 32 to 13. Phyllis kicks towards the goal square, where the mark is fiercely contested. It's paid to Sandy Nelson, whose battle with Royce Hart is a feature of the grand final. At the end of the first quarter, Sturt lead 39 points to 15. In the second quarter, Nelson instigates a counter-attack for Sturt.
Greenslade's kick from a sharp angle goes across the face of the goal for a behind. Sturt is having most of the play, and from a throw-in, Wilde taps the ball to Ottens, who pivots to evade Button's tackle. Colby grabs possession, his high punt giving Glenelg a chance to drive forward, but Brooks and Bagshaw challenge Marker for possession, and a ball up is ordered. Greenslade's accuracy shows no sign of faltering as the ball goes through the centre for Sturt's eighth goal. The double blues lead by 38 points, 53 to 15. Kernahan is constructive in the rucks, but the Tigers kicking lacks authority. It's the same with their handling, but Eustace backs up to put the Tigers into a promising position. Fred Phyllis overruns the ball as he battles Ottens, but with Pattinson's assistance, gathers and is paid a free. The full forward kicks Glenelg's third goal. The Tigers still trail by 31 points. It's 53 to 22. Glenelg are becoming more positive in their approach and back up better than in the first quarter. Marker goals on the run as the Tigers gradually close the gap and produce their best form of the game. Rowe spoils Greenslade, but Sturt's full forward is paid a free about 40 yards out and on an angle. It's there, and Sturt lead 59 points to 32. Soon after, Schoff left puts the ball into an open goal as Sturt overcomes an old short-lived challenge. Again, Glenelg appear uncertain, and there's no sharpness in their kicks as Sturt keeps them under constant pressure. But they're prepared to battle hard, and Hamilton pulls down a good mark in front of Short. Slow to take his kick, Hamilton is forced to sidestep short, but his pass to Voigt goes astray. Good backing up, Salvage is the position, and Rose Warren left foots a goal. At halftime, Sturt lead 10 goals, 7, 67 points, to 5 goals, 10, 40 points. To overcome such a lead, Glenelg will need to reproduce their third quarter form of the preliminary final, in which they overpowered West Adelaide to go on and win by 53 points. But the confident double blues are a different proposition. There's not a weakness in their lineup, and they have the strength and courage to offset the most determined challenge. And rarely has there been such an experienced side. Eight of its members playing in their fifth successive grand final and four others in their fourth premiership decider. Which all adds up to the odds being heavily stacked against the Tigers. Wilde just beats Carnahan for the hit out and Sturt dashed straight into the attack. The reliable Bagshaw pulls down a mark. It's a good kick and up they go. Greenslade snaps a clever goal as Sturt relentlessly pursue their fourth straight premiership. Back comes Glenelg. They must produce a more constructive pattern to have any chance of checking the double blues. And Royce Hart is their big hope. His kick is only a behind, but he's coming more into the game now. Sturt leads 73 points to 41. Glenelg strive to get their teamwork functioning, but are being outplayed in almost every phase of the game. Sturt are far more dangerous with the ball and breaking from half forward, Tilbrook goals as Sturt take command. The Double Blues lead by 38 points, 81 to 43. 
Schoff and Colby have a running battle for possession, but Sturt's vice-captain has the ball under control and cleverly guides it away from Hart. Hill gathers at his second attempt, but his shot goes across the face of the goal and out of bounds. From the throw-in, Sturt regains possession, Rigney sidestepping past Curley to break clear and kick Sturt's 13th goal. Here come the double blues again. It's another goal as Sturt dominates play. But Glenelg gamely defend their goal and there's some heavy body contact before the umpire orders a ball up. Using his pace, Rigney darts into the clear, kicking for Hicks. But he's beaten for the mark. In the goal square, Hart takes a towering mark. He's maintaining the brilliant form that made him such a valuable player for Richmond in the VFL Premiership. Through for a goal, but there's still 45 points the difference in Sturt's favour. From in front, Fred Phyllis easily beats Short to mark. Should his kick be successful, Phyllis will break a 33-year-old goal-kicking record for a season set by Ken Palmer of North Adelaide. goal gives the 21-year-older a total of 135 goals for the season and he completes a unique double as earlier he won the coveted 69 Margaret medal, the first full forward ever to receive the award. Clark to Bergen. On to Rigney as Sturt race goalwards again. A faultless handball to Shearman who passes to Greenslade. Sturter in full cry as Greenslade hooks a goal from an acute angle, bringing groans of disappointment from the Tigers' cheer squad. At the end of the third quarter, Sturt had a commanding advantage of 47 points, 108 to 61. For Sturt coach Jack Oti, there's a coincidental twist to today's match. In 1950, he was captain coach of Norwood when they defeated Glenelg, the last time the Tigers contested a grand final. Norwood defeated them easily and Sturt are well on the way to doing the same. The Tigers appear tired and dispirited. Compared to Sturt's experienced grand finalists, only three of their number, coach Neil Curley, Eustace and Hart, have played in such games. In the final quarter, Sturt continue playing with confidence and purpose, but Hart has paid the mark over Nelson. He's playing a fine game, but must get constant support if Benelg is to have any chance of making up the leeway. A tremendous kick is marked by Boyd just wide of the goal square. Boyd's on target, but Glenelg need plenty more goals as they're still 41 points behind. Sturt's passing is generally of a high standard, but Crab spoils Brooks. Clark is there to cover the ball. Outpacing marker, Clark passes for Schock. Thorns beats him to gain possession, but Schock's rugged tackle... Wayne Phyllis beats Clark to the ball and Glenelg turn the attack. As Hart and Nelson contest possession, Chessel grabs the ball to send Sturt back towards Glenelg's goal. Tilbrook takes one of the day's best marks as again Sturt's perseverance pays off. It's Sturt's 17th goal, making Glenelg's task hopeless. They're 47 points behind, but keep struggling on, and Fred Phyllis takes a characteristic mark. 
Opportunities for Phyllis have been restricted, but there's little doubt had Glenelg's distribution been more fluent, several more goals would almost certainly have come his way. And that's his fourth for the day. It seems each time Glenelg scores, Sturt lift their game and they're on the way again. But Crabb bumps Chessel. Crabb's hurried pass rebounds off the boots of Brooks. Recovering quickly, Chessel passes to Rigney, but Hunt spoils him. A beaver like Rigney gathers and handballs to Shearman. His well-directed kick is marked by the skillful Greenslade over Corns just outside the goal square. An easy shot and Greenslade kicks Sturt's 20th goal to take the double blues into an unbeatable 60 points lead. It's Sturt all the way now as Shearman marks. He kicks for shot. Bernal may have no possible hope but are prepared to go down fighting. Tilbrook again. With four full pointers, he's Sturt's second highest goal scorer to Greenslade in the grand final. Noonan handballs to Hicks as Rose Warren gives chase. A good pass to Schock, but he's a long way out and on a sharp angle. It's a behind, Sturt's 14th, but they increase their lead to 71 points. Although weary, Glenelg struggle on, but there's some ragged play as the game draws to its conclusion. A fine mark by Curley. He plays on, a keenly judged pass allowing Fred Phyllis to mark strongly over Jarrett. Phyllis is shooting for his fifth grand final goal and his 137th of the season, a figure that could stand for decades. A smoke bomb ignites streamers inside the boundary line near the river end goals, and police and spectators try to stamp out the flames. But play goes on with Rigney in the clear. Walking Eustace, he passes to Chessel. On to the ever alert shop with a goal wide open. But as Wayne Phyllis closes in, Schopp hurries his shot. The ball flies off the side of his boot, wide of the goal. Glenelg defend right on the boundary line, but Wilde snaps a goal, the 24th for the double blues. That fire's under control, and with barely a minute of playing time left, Marker lines up a shot for goal. It's there, but the siren brings an end to the grand final, which is won by Sturt, 24 goals, 15 behinds, 159 points, to Glenelg's 13 goals, 16 behinds, 94 points. And it's a day of records. Sturt registers the highest score in a South Australian grand final, bettering North Adelaide's 1952 total by six points. And Greenslade's nine goals equals the league grand final record set by another Sturt player, Grassy Green, back in 1932. Bob Shearman is presented with the Thomas Seymour Hill Trophy by South Australia's Governor, Sir James Harrison. Also, the Premiership flag, which is unfurled before the Double Blues take off on a lap of honour. All hail Sturt, South Australia's Football Masters, 1969.